After the group vigils, we split up. Scott was on his own and Michelle and I um, did a vigil together at the foot of the stairs. Clara Sutton died when she was 10 years old when they lived in London, England. Clara, are you here? Come and talk to us, Clara. Come and play with us. Too bad we didn't have a toy like mm -hmm. we did last time. Ephraim, are you here? Rose Sutton, are you here? Oops. Or maybe Thomas Burgess. Can you show yourself in the form of light? or tap on something so we can hear you. Maybe move some of those hangers over there. They're not very heavy. Yeah, they're light. Hmm. Maybe they're just shy. Well, there was a big party here last night and if they didn't like drinking, just cleared out. Like Dave said, they just didn't like what's up. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We weren't trying to be disrespectful by putting your pictures in the bar area if you were insulted. We were just trying to get some sort of reaction because it's been so quiet around here. Maybe that wasn't the tactic to take. Sometimes you have to. Just a little nudge. Exactly. Hi. Hi. What's going on? Not a whole lot. All I see is like one huge lens flare straight. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Yeah. No. I think I debunked the uh the cold on the shoulders. I don't know if Why? you read that entire article. The buddy talks about when they were back there. He suddenly felt the cold on, yeah. on his shoulders. At the very back is where all the freezer units are. Yeah. When I went to look into the one room there, it was like a storage room. I think if you remember seeing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt cold on my shoulders, but I think it's just that whole room is cold. Like you can see your breath. Wow. So uh -huh. I don't think it's paranormal. I think it's natural. Let me just Scott by myself, heading into Lux again. I'm gonna chill out in here by myself for a little bit. Man, it's amazing how much these cameras can see because I cannot see Jack Squad. Okay, a new vantage point. Up here around the room, I'm actually gonna need my flashlight now, I think. So is there anybody in here with me? Come and say hello. In any way you can. Please don't be afraid. Or angry. We don't mean to upset you, and I know we moved your pictures in hopes that it might get your attention. So if we have upset you by doing that, we do apologize, but it's very important to us that we meet you, that we get some sort of proof of your existence. So please, if there's anything you can do. There was a tremendous cold spot that seemed to localize right around me. Is there anybody in here with me? I'm getting extremely cold right now, like bone-chilling cold. 
I know that's a sign that sometimes you can do that. You're drawing from the, the actual warmth out of the, the air to, to manifest. I appreciate that. I appreciate the effort. I know it must be difficult, if not almost impossible. Also, while I was in the Lux Lounge by myself, I heard some strange tapping sounds. Uh, couldn't really tell if it was from in the room or outside or maybe in another room, but uh, I definitely heard something. Hello? I'm hearing a sounds from over here. Oh, wow. I just stood up and it is freezing cold right here. Unbelievable. Is there somebody here with me? And then it would disappear. And then it would come back and then it was gone again. I feel extremely cold right now, right in this spot. Oh, uh, okay. There's a vent. Let's see if there's any air coming out of that. Nothing. And actually, you know what, like standing here, I'm like five feet away from where I was. Yeah, you walk right back into it, right here, freezing cold. It's not that. There's something here. Would you like to sit down beside me? That was... That was some intense cold. But it wasn't like a breeze, you know? It was like a concentration. Hello? in the Lux. Lux Lounge. Mm. Is there anyone here with us? So Scott didn't give you any indication of what happened to him? Yes, he did. Oh, he did? What was it? I'm not Why am I the only one that can't know? Because. Oh, you guys. We're working on developing your sixth sense. Oh, okay. Is there anyone here with us? Mr. Sutton, are you here? Come sit with us. Man, it's so cool sitting in hundred year old inn with the sound of the rain mm -hmm. behind us. And no Just, one else in the And field. nobody else around, yeah exactly. Oh, I thought I just saw a shadow move over there. Really? Should I put my flashlight over there? No, I just put the uh, night vision over there and I didn't see anything, but... Where was it? It, like, moved right... You can see it through. Right by the... Okay. ...pillar there. Mm -hmm. Is that him walking over there? Yeah, I think so. Oh, musty. Mm -hmm. Wow. Kind of like piney though, or something all of a sudden right there. Yeah. 
That wasn't here before, was it? No. Scott said he read in one of the things that a lady was seen in here wandering around like she was looking for something. Oh, yeah. Is there a lady in here? Oh, the camera isn't really picking up the tin ceilings, but they're beautiful and they're original. Pick them up, eh? Oh, there, your flashlight. They picked them up. Beautiful. Maybe she found whatever she lost. Yeah. Carried on. I first decided to tackle room 312 as my first solo vigil. Um, this is a room where there have been a number of claims. Mr. Sutton, are you here? Can you hear my voice? We've been on many investigations like this. And in some places we've gotten sounds, noises, voices. So we know it's, it's not against any universal law for you to communicate with us. So please, if there's, if there's anything you can do, sir, Apparently this is a room that you use quite frequently, Mr. Sutton. I was wondering if you would take some time to come and hang out with me. I too am a, am a musician. I play the drums. So I feel we have a little bit in common. Please do not fear my presence. Um, I'm certainly not here to hurt you or make you leave or anything like this. I know this is this is your place. This is the place that you built. And it will forever be your place, regardless of who owns it. There's a story that says that before Mr. Sutton died, he made a vow to try to communicate when he died to give the rest of the people living here a sign that there was an afterlife something beyond this mortal coil. And that allegedly, shortly after E.B. Sutton died, there appeared three very large thuds on the front door, much like what he said he would do. That's what we're after. That's why we do this. We come to these places, we sit in the dark and hope to meet you, to get that proof there is something beyond this, this flesh, this matter. Because I don't want to believe that when my time comes, the lights just go out and that's it. I'm going to have to leave here soon. So if there's anybody here that wants to make an impression, please do. Please help me document your existence. Well, while I was doing my vigil in 312, uh, there wasn't really a lot going on, but the one thing that I did notice is that it was dead quiet. It's dead quiet in this room, like it's been in pretty much every place we've been, or I've been, I mean, with the rest of the team, by myself. It's, it's kind of eerie in itself. It's, Absolutely quiet. Dead quiet. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because we're, we're from a, the city, you know, there's always some sort of noise going on. Traffic or, uh, you know, planes or, or whatever, but there's just none of that here. It's just quiet. It's kind of peaceful, actually. I can see why you'd want to stay here, sir. What I found really interesting about um, Scott's vigil and Michelle's vigil on the second floor after I'd sent them down there on their separate vigils was that each of them ended up in the exact same spot almost that I ended up in. So I headed down to the second floor and 
for some reason or other, I was sort of drawn to the branch of the hallway that ended in 219, the room 219. This is Michelle, and I am all alone on floor two. Which, Kathy said, she got really creeped out about something down here. She wouldn't tell Scott or I what, um, so she wouldn't bias us. Bias us. So that's good. So I'm excited to see what kind of stuff goes down. So there's some little lights here. A little bit. Is anybody down here? This is new addition, newer addition anyways. That's the laundry room in there. I don't really feel like a whole lot back in this area because I assume because it's new. So we're gonna stick to the hallway of the angry footsteps. movement down towards the end of the hall that I just left. It sounded like it was coming from maybe that door. Outside of that room I could hear some tapping and creaking and sounds of what sounded like movement and I couldn't tell for sure whether it was coming from inside the room or where exactly it was coming from but there was definite noise down at that end of the hallway. Is anyone here? Hmm. I did hear something. So we're just gonna hang around and see. Now it wasn't wasn't me walking on the floor or causing the sound because I had stopped because I was about to turn on my walkie-talkie, which I realized I forgot to turn on. And as I was standing still, I heard creaking, kind of shuffling. Fortunately, I didn't have the camera on at the time. I don't think it would have picked it up anyways. It was quite soft, but distinct, though. Is anyone there? Come and talk to me. Walk towards me. There's a bit of mystery surrounding Catherine's solo vigil on the second floor and she wouldn't tell us what, uh, what had happened to her until we went down there and experienced it for ourselves. Now when I was down there by myself I did have a strange occurrence and um, unfortunately it, it, you have to chalk it up to personal experience which almost equals no evidence because I can't prove what I saw. Alright, this is Scott on uh, the second floor I'm in the hallway where Kath had some sort of incident, she won't say what. Uh, just so she doesn't influence us anyway, and hope and she hopes that uh, something similar will happen to me. Reports on this floor. Um, there's some curious goings on in room 208, which is just beyond that exit sign uh, on the left-hand wall, and uh, the sound of footsteps in the hallway.
Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to move. This uh, plug here seems to be dead, and my battery's almost drained. All right, cool. I found a place to plug in. I'm down by the uh, laundry rooms, I believe. And so we're just gonna chill for a little bit and check out this hall. I hope we hear something. Any spirits present in this hallway, in this hotel, who can hear my voice? Could you please make your presence known? Just had a situation, I'm not sure if I saw what I thought I saw. It's one of those corner of the eye kind of moments. I was just looking slightly down, and I could have swore I saw something rip by the hall and go down those, and go down the stairs. At the end of this hall, to the right, you see the door with the door handle here, just here where this this line is. That's that's the staircase going to the next floor. And as I was just looking down, and, and not even at the corner, at the tops of my eyes. I saw a, something whip by there. What I think I saw. was white. Uh, hard to tell if it was like a dress or something. It just it moved so fast that I, I don't know. I don't know if I saw anything. I might, maybe that's just my mind playing tricks on me. But you know, when I look down now. I don't, I don't see anything flashing by there. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if that's the same thing that happened to Kath. So it happened right here. I was down there at the end of that hall and I saw something whip right by here. It looked like it went down these stairs, like it was moving at high speed. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Scott isn't the kind of guy to um, attribute noises or events on an investigation automatically to paranormal. He'll go just about everywhere else to try to explain something other than paranormal. So I think it was really significant that he reacted um, so strongly to this. I truly believe he did see something that we can't explain. Come on in. It's me. Is it locked? Come on in. How'd it go? I did not like that. The most significant one for me was when I was on the second floor and I walked down the corridor where David said he'd heard the angry footsteps. I'm going down to the second floor. Just to sit quietly and see if I can hear those footsteps. Who's there? I think I know what it might be. Nope. Thought it might be the sound of rain on the roof here on this new part, but it is most definitely not that. I stopped outside room 219 and was just starting to, you know, think about getting into the vigil when I heard what sounded to me like someone on the other side of that door moving, like taking a step or something or listening at the door. I just heard a sound like someone moving in this room beside me, 219. Just 
checking to see if there's light coming in from in there, but there isn't. No one else in the hotel. It's a really spooky feeling here. But like I say, I don't know if it's just because I'm alone and I'm freaking myself out or what. Is there anyone here with me? Rose? Ephraim? Thomas? Can you show yourself? I just heard a noise. It's from this room again, 219. I'm not going in there. I'm not even going to try the knob. I didn't want to tell Michelle and Scott what I'd experienced because I wanted them to be able to go down there and see if they'd experience something similar. Never, because it's energy. It's like I'm not afraid of energy. I'm not afraid of, like, why would I be afraid of some, some entity that is probably in another dimension that I'm I'm hopefully we'll get to experience at some point in time. So I'm like, no, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a frightening experience.